Hello, hello. Welcome on into another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. I'm Matt. Today we're lucky enough to be sipping on a whiskey from the Ultimate Whiskey Company. This is an 11-year-old Bunahaven. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell. Matt? All right. So, a couple years ago, no, actually three years ago, our buddies Annie and Tara came down. They brought this little amazing vial here. They brought the whole bottle, but they left us some samples of it. This is the Ultimate Whiskey Company. They're Bunahaven from 2009. It's an 11-year. It's cash strength. It's sherry cask. But first, I'm going to tell you the history. It's going to take a while. It's a really interesting history. But it's the entire history of single malt from the Netherlands and how it got there. So you should sit back and relax and pull up a good whiskey while you listen. This can take about five minutes. And well, I think we'll start probably going to smoke a cigarette during this time. So that's good times. All righty then. So the Ultimate Whiskey Company is an independent bottler founded in 1994 by Hans Maurice Van Wees, which is a fun name to say. Wees! So anyway, to source one of the best single malt casks they could find at Cash Strength and non show Filter, so what they do is they sample it out and they take it back to the office just to make sure that it tastes the same as it did when they were at the warehouse. So I think it's pretty smart of them because a lot of times, as we know, it does change. And then they said all their balls are numbered on every label. You can really tell where it was distilled, the bottling date, the actual age, the cast date. As a matter, so they're very much into transparency, which I greatly appreciate. They are the ultimate whiskeys. Like I said, they also bought without chill freshness because they don't care for chill freshness instead of rinse their whiskeys. So I think that's pretty honest of them to say that. So very nice. They say their true philosophy, we want to offer those with the best quality possible for an affordable, honest price, which I also greatly appreciate. And they say they're also looking for old-fashioned quality cask, single malt, and because that's the ultimate whiskey, and that's where they are there in the Netherlands. So this was founded by Hond and Maurice. So back in the day, uh, Maurice was started in the whiskey business in 1987. His father, though, had started importing... Uh, single malt into Holland in the 60s, which really hadn't really been done very much at that point in time. And the reason being, they both had blends, and he had founded uh, also previously a tobacco company that started back in 1921. But because of this, and how did that these single malt show up? Is there was a boat called the MS Hornland. The Hornland had an accident and it became highly damaged. So it was on its way to Odd Rotterdam. Boat stuck. The United so so one of their friends bought all the cons of the ship, and then Han. Bought the entire lot of whiskey and champagne because he's a smart guy. So to his uh, surprise, they're trying the whiskey out. And they said, this is much better quality than we used to get him in the Netherlands. They find out it's a single malt. It's not a blend. Shockingly, he's like, he loved it so much. His customers also love it. They started contacting him, please get me a single malt. Please get in fact, the distillers themselves tried to buy it back from it. It was so good. He told them no. He was selling it to his customers. So thank you, Han, for doing that. You're an awesome guy. So... Speaking of that, then at the time, basically you had Gordon McPhail and you had Kate and have really the only single malt bottlers. The, the main guys, they didn't do that. They just made blends. They really, there wasn't no such thing until what, 1963 with Glenn Fittick with the very first, that was the very first one that still single outside of Scotland. So here's this amazing thing that somehow basically accidentally these Dutch guys got a hold of to start the entire movement inside of Holland, which I think is amazing. So, you know, Back then, uh, so Cadenhead went on to bottle some special things for them. This is young Ardbeg, young Lafroy casks. Uh, and they also had some prior bottling, some super peated single malts they were giving them. Of course, these were all young at the time. In fact, they did a single malt tasting there. I love the first time. They thought the whiskey had gone bad. They never had heavily peated whiskey, which is hilarious. So I find that very amusing that that's the case. So they've been doing this for a while. So to 1994, they're like, you know what? Let's make our own independent bottler company rather than getting from Caden and, or getting from Signatory or something like that, or getting direct from the store, which is cool. Cause even in fact, uh, the more was making an Isla malt five year without their name, or they're getting it from Signatory, which is owned by Andrew Simmons and who have done some history on them as well, which apparently is a good friend of Han. So of course he would go on to the fact to own this place called Edredar, which we do love there for Andrew owns that place there. So they decided what are they going to do? Make their own company. But they're only going to bottle things that they love themselves and a hundred percent the consumer would love it and trust them to get it sold at a reasonable price. Which I think is pretty great of them. They've never advertised only spread by word of mouth. If you look at their bottles, which I'll have in the videos for you guys, the bottle pretty basic looks like an old scotch bottle really and truly with their labels from like the 60s or 70s haven't changed it much it looks like essentially even though it's 94 they started this they went with those old school labels which is pretty cool so anyway so now they either get all their uh whiskey either directly from the distillery or from signatory and their big vast thing so basically they only get really good stuff and that's all they bottle if it's crappy they'll send it back they don't want it so which is pretty cool of them. So they've had some really fun things over the years. They've had Port Allen, Springbank, 
Ardbeg, Lefroy, Lamore, all sorts of good fun stuff. So they have also their rare casks that they serve out as well, which is their rare reserves, which is their closed and more expensive distillery. So do appreciate that they have a special one. The amazing thing is they say when they're tasting these, almost always Han Maurice agree exactly on the same cask that they should be bottled now. In fact, also um, Maurice's son and, and daughter have joined in, which is Julie and Joel, who also have joined the company are doing the exact same thing with their father and grandfather. So it's a very fun multi-generational company. This is the fourth generation, of course, to work for the Von Wien family. So good fun times there. Like I said, they always like to bottle non-show filtered. They do do a little bit of filtering as far as taking the sediment out, of course. Uh, not great to have, you know, sediment in your whiskey. But, you know, it's all good, which I do appreciate that. Everything's at cash strength. Also awesome. They said they always want to change their bottles so the consumers don't get bored. And they also want to make sure that the consumers love it, which I think is pretty great. So he, one of the questions I was reading him asked what they like, which customers was your favorite and what's your favorite thing for underrated? So he said one thing he believes is, Lots of independent bottlers rely on the distillery name, but the whiskey may not be great. He's like, oh, it's such and such, and that's great, but it's not. So he says, I don't really give a crap where it's from as long as it's good whiskey, which is fair. He also doesn't like to get whiskeys that are overpowered by the finishing cast, which they're covering up a flaw. He wants to actually enhance your whiskey. So I think I really give him a lot of credit for doing it. So some of his favorites, he said, are Glen Spay, which we don't see a lot of. There's You'll see those occasionally. He said those are really great for him. He said he's also been offered like Ardbegs he didn't think were good enough for his company. He sent them back, which is, I mean, it's pretty wild that you sent back Ardbegs. So good for him. So like he said, it's for him every time, just difference that the, the best he can get and every little bit extra is what matters to him. He says, you know, what would you say are the benefits of choosing a whiskey for an event bottle? Which I think is actually a good question. And generally, he said that we started the ultimate whiskey company to make the difference in the market. It should bring you a great single malt for a great price with all the particulars of the cast, which has been matured, nothing less. Every time it's different, every time is exciting. And you should be excited every time you open a bottle from the Ultimate Whiskey Company. So what are we going to drink? That's the part that matters to you guys. So I thought that was really cool and interesting history, how, it, how single malt basically came to the Netherlands. All right. So what this is, is the Ultimate Single Malt. Before, single before malt you go too much further, just to prove. Do what? Before you go too much further, just to prove that we were listening. Uh, as soon as you said the names at the beginning, Sarah turns to me and goes, did she just say Hans? And then goes, I am Hans. And I said, and I am Franz. <laughs> of course, because, you know, that's, we're that's, here the, to age group. You up. that's the age group that we're a part of. Uh, that's and then right. secondly, talk about Ardbeg and he said, uh, you know, some people smelled it and said that they thought it was just had gone bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know somebody would still think that. So that's true. It yeah. is funny. All right, so what are we drinking here? What All right, so what we're drinking here, so like the ultimate whiskey, this this ultimate single malt here, single malt scotch, just the Isla single malt, we're going to have a 2009 cast strength, 67%. This will be the highest single malt scotch we've ever had in ABV. So you think, oh, this is amazing. 134 proof. That's insanity for a scotch. Okay, so this was distilled on uh, March 3rd. Sorry, March 7th, uh, 2009, which is my wife's birthday. It's pretty cool. Uh, bottled on 04-17-2020. Cast number 9073. Sorry, 90073. Bottle number 535 of 589. It was matured in first full sherry butts for 11 years. And like I said, this was given to us by Andy and Tara, and they're awesome. And that uh, they said this thing was about $103 for the bottle. So let's see what we think of this amazing. I mean, the color on that is just insane to begin with, that sherry cask. The first yeah, full cherry like butt. Pink I mean, hue to beautiful. it. Yeah. I love first full cherry really butt. Super so. expensive for that high of a proof of scotch. My goodness. Dude, this is oh, like right bourbon price. level proofs, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. There are it's many cast awesome. strength bourbons that don't come and that's close to this. Vanilla cake mix. Wow. Yeah. Oh, these oh, rich oh, berries oh, floating oh, on oh. top. It's like angel food cake with like this mm. this mm. dense this dense cherry compote. No, it's vanilla cake mix before you put it in the oven. After mm. you finish mixing it, it's a liquid yeah. form. Yeah, add some vanilla bean ice cream to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Raisins, like berry notes, dates, plums, figs, very very juicy dates. Yeah. A little bit of candied apple, caramel, cinnamon, black pepper. I get some cherry in there. Pink lady apple. Strawberry. Apples. Getting sea salt. Burnt salt. sugar. And sulfuric. Uh, cream brulee. Mm -hmm. Vanilla custard. Pralines. It's super vanilla. 
Yeah, yeah. sugar coated almonds, even brown sugar. Oh, it smells amazing. This is insane. And it's, and you know, that proof isn't coming out the glass. It doesn't. This doesn't smell it hot doesn't at all. It doesn't smell hot. It, it smells a little bit spicy. Not to me. It doesn't smell 100 and it, 134. No, it doesn't, smell, it doesn't smell that to me. We'll have one of those later. It burn you up here at the top of your nostrils the no. way a lot of high proof Correct. bourbons do. Yes, agree completely. Oh, okay. It's just it's ridiculous. It says multi vanilla deliciousness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whoa. Mm. Mm. Holy oh. hell. Yes. Holy crap. Even on the palate, though, it's not like punchy in the face proof. No. But it's the a little finish. warm, but not crazy. It's not so the finish either. No, the it's, it's there still going. at the very end. And the, yes, yeah. the finish is still going. Very warming. Wow. Um, but it's not, it's so different from somebody who's used to drinking the high proof bourbons. Mm -hmm. And that warming is just like, okay, I can step outside in 30 degrees and drink this and I'm warm. This is so different. Yeah. It's, I mean, it doesn't have any so of that. Across oily. The no, no. Mm. Yeah, there's so much beautiful sherry and dates and almonds. It's a little bit of sarfulic beauty I really love. Put out match head, black mm -hmm. cherry, vanilla, and praline sugary almonds, and that burnt brown sugar, pink yep. lady apples, and caramel, and toffee, There's and the beautiful dryingness to it. Oh, my gosh. That's glorious. The sulfur is on the end for me. I love it. The, the drying finish is like a really deep, dark uh, cab, uh -huh. like a California yeah. cab where you have that wow. big, Tannins juicy just... unction. And like pulling it's, all the moisture out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah. Not quite like a tanat, but very, very cab. Oh, I did drink a nice tanat the other day. It was really good. I drank the whole bottle. It was yeah. <laughs> and promptly filled. It was over like a four hour period. It wasn't like a drug uh, thing. I, I, I can understand it though, man. I love tanats. Fabulous wines. Oh, oh this, this is, is so freaking good. This is, so this is good. ridiculous. This is insane. I don't know where he found this. I'm sure he found it online. All I know is I must get a hold of this company. Everything I read is so amazing. I would love to talk to these guys on the show because this is – in fact, they list every bottle they've ever put out. On, it's like a 24-page PDF wow. of every single bottle they've ever put out. That's amazing. Wow, that's awesome. That's so, transparency. It's crazy transparency, which I really appreciate. This is beyond uh, ridiculous. You said yeah. this came from Andy and Tara. Yeah. yeah thank you. you so much. Thank for you so much for sharing. I love that you guys give us just stupid good things all the time. Appreciate you. That's why they have a shelf. That's why they sponsor the Isla shelf. Shocker. They like <laughs> Isla. They went, in fact, they went to Isla this year and had an amazing saw, and sent us all sorts of cool pictures. I, really I saw it on uh, Face Space. I'm friends mm. with, with them on the Face Space. So. Oh. That was fun to watch. Stupid good. What? This is dumb. Why can everyone make whiskey this freaking good? Seriously. I will just have this from now on permanently. That'd be great. Right? Can if, I just have an endless supply of this right here? Well, here's the real thing. If all $110 whiskey tastes this good, I would have no problem with whiskey costing $110. Right. This is true. The problem is, is so many people are putting inferior whiskeys into, into these bottles and, and asking close. for 150, and it's just subpar at best. And it's generally bourbon; it's not Scotch that's doing it. Well, that's true too. But Although it's definitely Scotch, not Scotch at this proof. Scotch uh, have gone no. through the roof. This actually yeah. feels older than 11 it years. It does feel much older. Than it does. It's I just would have guessed 18. That's years. a great cask. I mean, it's, they just yeah. got a beautiful cask, and it just, it's just perfect. They did a good job picking this one. Yeah, so uh, you know, I probably would have said something closer to fifteen. It doesn't have quite the depth of an eighteen. Yeah, but it it definitely it's, it's older it than eleven. Feels a lot older than eleven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Yep. Thanks so, again, guys. Miss your faces. Yeah, the Ultimate Whiskey Company is amazing. So I, I would suggest anything from the Ultimate Whiskey Company. I buy it probably on the spot. I've never seen a ball from this company, but I will be on the lookout for it. I don't know if this comes to the stage or not, but if it doesn't, it should. It's awesome. That's all you need to know. So Agreed. thank you very much, Annie and Tara, for sending us amazing whiskey. And uh, I hope Always. to find more of this in my life because this stuff is great. More like 
Thank you, Andy, for sharing something that's not an Ardbeg so I can drink it too. <laughs> that's also true. <laughs> they are I have the choice of Ardbeg. Ardbeg. I don't want to waste that on, on... no. Don't worry. <laughs> We're drinking an Ardbeg Ardbog next for me and Will. It'll be fine. I won't see you that one. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell. Come hang out with us live on Monday nights and check us out live in person at the castle if you happen to be in town. And until next time. Keep on crochet for better whiskey in your glass. Cheers. 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 Finish that bitch off. Yes, yeah, it's all in my mouth. <laughs> ah, <laughs> let me lick the inside of my glass. <laughs> it's delicious. No bold beef. <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah, that's probably the best food I've ever had. That's absurd. Uh, yeah. yeah.